Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here in my YouTube channel. Today, I'm actually going to be showing you guys how you can stream no matter what your internet speeds are. I've been streaming for more than 4 years at this point and believe it or not, when I first started, my internet speeds were at 0.5 for upload. That's how bad it was and guess what, I was still managing to upload and I was still managing to stream with a fairly decent quality for that speed. So stick around throughout the whole video if you want to know how to do that. And even if you have a good internet speed and you're still kind of having a couple of issues here and there, this video should help you out. So make sure you watch the entirety of it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to Google and you're going to search for a speed test. You can use whatever speed test you can find. It will they will all basically tell you the same results. Um, so just choose whatever and you're going to want to keep in mind what your upload speeds are. That's what we're going to be focusing on here on this video because when when you're streaming, you actually need the upload speed. Yes, the download speeds are nice. And for the most part, that's what the internet provider tells you when you're buying the internet. They almost never tell you what upload speeds you're getting. So make sure you keep a, an eye out for that. So once you know the results for your speed test, you're going to either want to write them down in a little note or just keep them in mind, like I said. And this is where we get to the OBS settings. But before we do so, bro, make sure you connect your computer to your router through an Ethernet cable. I know this may sound obvious to a lot of you guys, but I feel like there's also a big portion of people that don't know about this. But basically, if you're not connected directly through your router, through an Ethernet cord, you're basically losing out on a lot of speed that's just being lost due to you not being connected. So just keep that in mind if you can connect your computer to your router and even if it's in another room dude go out and get a huge cable of it they're not really that expensive so just get a huge ethernet cable if you can because i'm telling you you're actually missing out on a lot of speed if you are not connected directly to your router once you do that you can now actually head on over to settings over on obs and once you're on settings you're gonna want to check over video settings in your video settings, it'll tell you the resolution and the frames per second you are putting out your content at. This should not be any more than 720p. Even if you have really good internet connection, any more than 720p is not going to look good even if you have good internet because Twitch actually only lets you stream at around 6,000, 7,000 kilobits per second when you're an affiliate so if you're not even an affiliate you i'm pretty sure the cap is even lower so don't even try to go for a 1080p i feel like that is a m common misconception over on the resolution side of things a lot of people go straight for the 1080p you don't even have to and a lot of times even if you do choose that it'll look even worse than if you were to choose 720p just because like i said the limitations with twitch and your internet speeds are not going to allow for that so Try 720p maximum, uh, you can also try 480p, or you can check out different aspect ratios or different resolutions that are in between 480p and 720p. And just so that you know, big streamers also do not stream at 1080p for the most part. For example, Shroud streams at somewhere around 900 and something p, and like I said, just the reason for that is because it is way better in general. So over here on FPS, although it may be really tempting to put this on 60, and I have it on 60 myself now, if you can't handle it, just put it to 30, because if you are forcing your computer to push out more pixels than your internet can actually handle, it'll just look even worse. That's actually the whole point of this video. If you have your settings set to more than you can actually do, It'll look even worse so make sure you put the right settings in now you're gonna head on over to the output settings over here on output settings the first thing you're gonna see is the encoder for the encoder it just comes down to personal preference and just kind of testing it depends on what hardware you have 
rather than what your internet is. So if you have a really good CPU, use the CPU encoding. If you have a really good GPU, you can use the GPU encoding. Like I said, just kind of like depends on what your PC has, not so much your internet speed, so you can choose whatever. But this, these different encoder settings will give you different settings for the next step. So I will try my best to cover both parts, but if I am missing something, make sure you let me know in a comment and I'll make sure I respond to you. Right now, I'm actually testing out to see the NVIDIA NVENC H264, which is my GPU. Um, so I will be looking over that, but I'll also let you guys know about the CPU settings, like I said. Over on rate control, you're gonna wanna put this on VVR. Now the reason for that is because it stands for variable bitrate. More often than not, if your speeds are pretty bad, your speeds are gonna be fluctuating a lot. So it is better to have a variable bitrate rather than a constant bitrate to make sure OBS is kind of like prepared to handle that and just kind of like keep that in mind, I guess. Now over on the bitrate area is where we're actually gonna pull out our note that we got from our speed test earlier and we're gonna kind of translate our megabits into kilobytes per second. The way it works is that for basically every megabit that you got out of the test, you're gonna translate that to a thousand kilobytes that you got over here on the bitrate. So for example, if I got a five megabit upload speed over on the speed test, you're gonna wanna change the bitrate to around 5,000 kilobits per second. Now, this is subject to change a little bit depending on a couple of factors. The reason for that is because, well, your computer is not the only thing that is gonna be using your internet. Or, better yet, your OBS is not the only thing that is gonna be using your internet. Because even if you are the only one using the internet at the moment, you may be also playing online games, or maybe you are playing music off of YouTube or SoundCloud, something like that. That'll also take out a little bit of your bitrate. So make sure you kind of test it around, try 5,000 at first and then go down from there. And like I said, um, my internet used to be on 0.5 and that means around 500 kilobits per second which was really bad now that I think about it, but you can, you know, you can get around with it. And then if you set it to VBR, you will most probably see a setting that is called CRF, at least for the CPU settings. I don't think it pops up for the Nvidia settings. So if you do have the CRF setting right there, make sure you set that to around 10, 15, somewhere around that. The reason for this is because, well, summarized, this will lose a little bit of your quality, but it will make up in terms of being easier for you to actually upload that content to your stream. And so keep in mind that zero equals loss less. So basically, if you set it to zero, you won't be losing any quality, but it will also take a little bit more internet. So just kind of playing around with it. And well, most of these settings, you're gonna have to test them around, do a little bit of, you know, test, 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 until you get to that sweet spot that you're looking for. After that CRF, uh, we're gonna check over here, keyframe interval. If you don't have good enough internet, just set this to zero. If you have a little bit of a better internet, set this to around two. That's the recommended by Twitch. And the reason for this is because this gets a little bit more of your internet used to make it look a little bit better. So just play around with that. If you don't have good enough internet though, set this to zero. It'll be automatic and it'll just take care of its own. Over here on max B frames, for example, that's something that pops up with your GPU settings. If you have GPU settings, um, I know that Twitch recommends this to be a two, but you can play around with it, like I said, because that's, you know, the recommended, but maybe it's not the lowest setting you can have it at. So just play around with that. And then over here, the preset profile, all those things are more so a hardware. So you can test those around if you want to. 
but that not that doesn't really have to do with your internet speed now before we move on to the next tips i'm actually going to give you guys a little bit of a secret tip that i have that i feel like a lot of people overlook when it comes to obs settings with a bad internet and that is adding a stream delay now most people just only use stream delay whenever they're playing for example a competitive game and they don't want to get stream sniped or something like that that is a great idea however it can also be used if you don't have the best internet out there the reason for that is because it kind of stays with your content a little bit longer it kind of holds it in your computer a little bit longer and so it makes sure that everything kind of like gets worked on right before sending it and so you're kind of giving your computer a little bit of a head start if you have a stream delay so make sure you play around with it i remember i used to have like 30 second delay and just all you got to do is just let your chat know as soon as possible that you have a little bit of delay so that they know that you're not ignoring them you just kind of have a little bit of delay and that can actually go a long way if you believe it or not the stream delay can actually help out immensely so that's basically it for the obs settings however i still have a couple of extra tips that i want to give you guys and the first one is to turn on the disconnect protection on your twitch settings this is very easy i'll have the video of me doing it on screen so that you can check it out but basically this makes it so that if for some reason your obs disconnects from twitch or it kind of like has a, an error or maybe your internet dips and so it stops sending as much uh, content over to Twitch. Instead of Twitch just automatically ending your stream, it'll just kind of like put a um, little screen for you and it'll say that you're having a little bit of issue. That's really good and a really lifesaver for those of us that have bad internet because I remember, like I said, my internet would fluctuate a lot and it was really bad so... I would get disconnected pretty much every time so having this disconnect protection helps out a lot and then after that you can actually set your latency to normal latency I think this is the default but I'm not sure if it is so make sure you check your latency and set that to normal latency or if you do have good enough internet speeds just set this to ultra low latency something like that but just like I said, you got to test and find that sweet spot with these settings. And then lately, and then lastly, for the last tip I actually have for you guys is try to play offline and solo games as much as you can. I know it's a bit of a bummer. Most games are cooler when you're playing with friends or if you're playing with viewers or if you're playing just online, you know, multiplayer games. But you will most probably be lagging your ass off if you're streaming and you're playing online at the same time and the internet is bad so just try to avoid those as much as you can i remember for myself i used to stream call of duty zombies back in the day and i would never be able to level up my actual um character my actual level because i had to play offline all the time because my internet was so bad it would not even let me connect so if you can, make sure you play offline games, and that's basically it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for everybody that made it this far. Drop a like, drop a comment if you have any extra questions, and make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on because I stream every single day from Monday to Friday over at Twitch at 4 p.m. Central Time Zone. The link to that will be on screen right now as well as in the description, and I upload YouTube videos twice a week sometimes even three times a week who knows so make sure you turn notifications on like i said that's been it for today's video boys peace